Arnold Palmer's popularity and success skyrocketed in the latter half of the 20th century, reaching heights few could have predicted. He wasn't just an icon at a time when golf needed a TV face. He wasn't just one of the first businessmen in sports. People followed the swashbuckler with the movie star looks both on and off the course. Palmer had a magnetic personality, and golf and sports in general will miss him terribly. He died on Sunday as a result of heart complications at the age of 87. Let us know your comments below, and make sure to watch until the end of the video to find out if your guess was correct. Arnold Palmer's go-for-broke style of golf bolstered a legion of fans dubbed Arnie's Army by the press, who lovingly bestowed the title of the king upon him not only for his prowess on the course, but also for his unfailing sense of kindness and thoughtfulness. Arnold Palmer's victory in the 1954 U.S. Amateur Championship served as a springboard to professional fame and fortune. A few months later, he went professional. His best years were a four-year span from 1960 to 1963 when he won 29 of his titles and earned nearly $400,000 at a time when purses were pitiful by today's standards. In a National Associated Press poll, he was named Athlete of the Decade for the 1960s. Before, during, and after that great decade, the famous golfer won 92 professional championships of national or international standing. 62 of the victories came on the PGA Tour of the United States, beginning with the 1955 Canadian Open. Seven of his victories came in what are considered the four major professional championships in golf. He won the Masters four times in 1958, 1960, 1962, and 1964. The U.S. Open in spectacular fashion at Cherry Hills Country Club in Denver in 1960 and the British Open in 1961 and 1962. He came from seven strokes back in the final round to win the U.S. Open and went on to finish second in four other Opens. Only the PGA Championship eluded him among the majors. Three times he finished second in the PGA. Arnold Palmer, a legend off the course and trailblazer. Years after Palmer won his final of seven major championships, after stepping away from the game with tears in his eyes, the office in his hometown of Latrobe, PA, was flooded with fan mail, as if he was still thrilling crowds with his wacky swing and miraculous putts. According to the club's manager, staff at Latrobe Country Club could never leave autograph requests for more than four or five days because the piles would get out of hand. Even in his 80s, the king maintained the kind of fan base that earned him the moniker in the first place. Palmer is the most popular player in golf history. According to Jack Nicholas, player, Lee Trevino, Ben Crenshaw, and a slew of other legends, I don't think there's any doubt if you ask any player playing, Crenshaw, a fellow Hall of Famer, says, Every golf professional who has come out since Arnold Palmer should absolutely thank him for what he's done for the game and all of us who have followed him. Palmer's own Hall of Fame career included 62 PGA Tour victories and 92 professional victories in total. He won four Masters tournaments, was a two-time PGA Player of the Year, a six-time Ryder Cup team member, a twice-winning Ryder Cup captain, and the first golfer to earn a million dollars in his career. Palmer's greatest contribution to the game, however, is not documented. It's the way he went about it and the way he was with people. Crenshaw, who grew up watching and idolizing the king, says, Arnold Palmer will never be replaced. Palmer's best friend and right-hand man. Doc Giffen, Palmer's best friend and right-hand man for over 45 years, was there to witness it all. He first covers Palmer's amateur career as a sports writer in Pittsburgh, then moved on to work for the PGA of America before becoming Palmer's assistant. People who weren't previously fans of golf became fans, says Giffen. Even non-golfers were drawn to him by his demeanor, smile, genial personality, and that cliché charisma. It came across very publicly to those who were watching. Palmer couldn't go anywhere in his 80s without being recognized and pursued for autographs. Giffen and Jerry claim they never saw him refuse a signature request. Palmer's presence drew attention to television because he was one of the few men out there giving people a reason to watch. It's like watching paint dry if you're watching a bunch of guys who are just stoic. Like Ben Hogan, a great player, but he didn't show any emotions, says Brad Brewer, former director of Arnold Palmer Golf Academies and author of Mentored by the King. Or you've got someone with this incredible energy. That's how Arnold played, and it piques the interest of everyone, even if you're not a golfer. 
People tuned in, and everything took off like a rocket. Arnold Palmer, the king, flew for the thrill. Palmer even holds an around-the-world speed record, having flown a Lear 36 around the world in less than 58 hours in 1976. He stopped in Sri Lanka for an elephant ride in the Philippines to meet then-president Ferdinand Marcos, who was a big golf fan. Nobody has flown that same route in that plane faster than him. The king flew for the thrill, but he often said Palmer the pilot helped Palmer the businessman succeed. It meant he could easily visit the sites of some of the more than 300 courses his design firm had created around the world. Arnold Palmer Enterprises, recognizable by its colorful umbrella logo, is one of the most successful business empires built by an athlete. Palmer's business success alone would have made him a legend. His late agent, Mark McCormick, co-founder of Arnold Palmer Enterprises, took on Palmer as his first client, launching now what is IMG, the world's first successful sports marketing empire. Palmer invested in and co-founded the Golf Channel after Joe Gibbs asked him what he thought of a 24-hour TV channel dedicated to golf. But no business transaction meant more to the king than the purchase of his home club in Latrobe, which is still owned and operated by the Palmer family today. It was here that his love of golf began, but more importantly, it was here that his father, Deacon, whom he referred to as Pap and admired more than anyone, worked tirelessly for 40 years as the course superintendent, head professional, and designer. Palmer's most important purchase, according to Giffen. Regardless of his success, he never forgot where he came from. It is impossible to define success. It was too broad, all-encompassing, and powerful. But one thing was certain. Arnold Palmer was a fan favorite everywhere he went, no matter when. The bulldozer had begun laying the groundwork for what was now just raw dirt, but would soon be the site of an Arnold Palmer signature golf course, the only one in the state. The king then decided in his 70s to make a last-minute trip to see the site for himself, as he frequently did. By the time he arrived, a crowd larger than the city's population of about 1,600 people had gathered all on the spur of the moment. It seemed like everyone within miles was there to see him, Brewer says. These people emerged from the woods. It was amazing. Palmer's celebrity was so great that even years after winning his final major, a last-minute visit to a small Missouri town drew tens of thousands of people. That he couldn't appear in public without causing a stir from the time he thrilled us on the course until he left us. And that even on the other side of the world, people recognized him as the king. No one will ever be as popular as Arnold Palmer, said Lee Trevino. Palmer did not hit a ceremonial opening tee shot at the 2016 Masters alongside his friends Gary Player and Jack Nicholas. That trio was marketed as the Big Three in its prime, and Nicholas, his great rival, spoke about Palmer's absence with notable sadness, already anticipating Sunday's news. Two months later, at the United States Open in Oakmont, 35 miles from Palmer's hometown of Latrobe, PA, players and commentators, young and old, paid tribute to the man known as the King. Golf had been emotionally preparing for Palmer's death, which was almost like losing a parent from millions of golfers around the world. Chichi Rodriguez, a golfer, spent decades preaching this message. Every touring pro should bow down and pray to Arnold Palmer for what he did for golf. What are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comment section. If you enjoyed today's video and found it interesting, then make sure to leave us a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon to be up to date with the latest content as soon as it's uploaded. Thanks for watching. See you again soon in another video.